Hi guys, I'm Olivia Jones, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Mary Freeman. So we're going to start with her biography. A lot of you probably have never heard of her or her writings, like I had before I started researching her, researching her. But I realized that she was, as I delved into her past and her all of her writings and what they all have in common, I realized that she was really interesting, she, and her writing was really spectacular for this time period. So we're going to start with her birth. She was born in Massachusetts on Halloween in 1852, but then she moved to Vermont with her family in 1867. She attended Mount Holyoke Female Seminary from 1870 to 1871 before she moved back home to her family. After her parents passed away, she moved back to Vermont to live with her friends in 1883 where she published her first adult story in a newspaper. In 1902, she married her husband, Charles M. Freeman, and moved back with him to New Jersey where she lived until her death in 1930. So I thought it was really interesting that she lived in New, New England her entire life because that's a lot of where her stories are based and it, her stories all really describe the scenery in New, in New England really well. That's a big focal point of her stories. And this right here is a picture of her. So the work I'm going to be talking to you guys about is A Humble Romance, which she published in 1884. So the story opens with a servant. She's washing dishes and her her owner, I suppose, or her boss is really mean to her. She treats her terribly. She doesn't feed her enough, doesn't take care of her. And the morning that the story opens, she actually was being cruel to her about how she wasn't washing dishes enough, doing enough. So when a merchant arrives randomly to their home, he realizes what's been going on, he realizes she's not being taken care of, and he doesn't really fall in love with her, but he feels bad for her, and he, wa and he wants to take care of her. He sees, like, this childlike quality in her that he admires, and he wants to take care of it, because he knows it hasn't been taken care of. So he offers her his hand, tells her that he'll take care of her forever, support her, give her whatever she needs. He's a lot older than her, but he feels like he'll be able to give her what she's been missing her entire life. So she's hesitant to agree because she's worried what her owner will think, but she does end up taking him up on his offer. She's excited to leave and he hides her away in his merchant wagon and he gives like the owner a gives her a story of where she went so that they could get away together. So he takes her to the city. They have a quick wedding and he gets her some clothes. He well, actually, she ends up buying her first outfit herself, which she doesn't really like. And so he, from there, he decides he's going to buy her a lot more outfits and food and take care of her. And he, well, they end up, like, going to this, like, little bar area after their honeymoon. And when they're, like, on, when they're selling items, they stop at this little, like, bar place. And he goes in, and he's normal when he goes in, but when he comes out, he's acting really weird. And that night, he's, like, telling her about his bank accounts, how he does his business, all this stuff like he's about to die or something and she wakes up the next morning and he is just taken off with no explanation he leaves her a note telling her that what well, like reminding her of all that he told her and reminding her that she promised him that if he ever left her she would take care of herself so she leaves the little inn that they were staying at she starts up his business she actually becomes a lot more successful at it than he ever was and she really proves that a female does not need a man to take care of herself. He ends up coming back years later telling her why he left her. He actually saw his ex-wife, or current wife I guess, that left him in that bar and she forced him to stay with her, leave his new wife Sally, and he does that. He leaves Sally to take care of herself, but the story was really interesting because it showed that female that even though females needed a man to get them and like sort of raise their society status at that time they could take that noose that higher status and really create something for themselves they did not need a man so i thought this story really mocked the traditional roles of women in this time period like i said she was started out a servant she was malnutrition and unappreciated then when the merchant arrives promising to take care of her forever she barely hesitates to agree leaves with him and then when he abandons her she continues with her bus with his business and makes it even more successful than he ever did when he returns she actually ends up proposing to him because their marriage was never real in the first place 
So she really took on the male role in that aspect because women never proposed in this time period. So that was something that I found really cool at the end. The historical context of this short story and when it was released in 1884 was the Gilded Age. So as many of you know, this time period created a great wage disparity between the working class and the higher class. The working class, which is like mostly immigrants, um, just the people that had to do everything for the higher class, take care of them. That was what Sally and her husband would have been considered. They had, they were existed in poverty. That's why when the story opens, Sally is how she is. She is malnutrition. She, you could tell she wasn't taken care of. And she did, there was nothing that she could really do to pull herself out of that position. And her husband himself, I mean, he was trapped in poverty as well because he had to rely, like, his, he could not get out of this bind with his ex-wife. And he, he didn't really have a home. He was a traveling merchant. He couldn't really take care of Sally, like, how she needed to be treated either. And if... Like the people that owned monopolies or big businesses, they existed in great financial wealth. They had multiple houses, all the clothes, food they could ask for. So it really was not fair, this wage disparity. And all of Mary Freeman's works portray people bound by financial difficulties or other handicaps that make it complicated for them to break out of their restrictive circumstances. That's why in Sally's case, her low social status and poverty made it difficult for her to move up in society. So that way when the man came along and helped her, she could take those initial first steps and then help herself. She didn't rely on him to help her. She was able to do that on her own. There were several criticisms of a humble romance, but the only ones I could find were positive, especially considering the female aspect. A lot of her critics thought that it was really cool that she was able to have these females that challenge these normal historical society roles they were able to be independent take care of themselves they didn't just list they didn't just listen and go along with how things are supposed to be so this critic wrote freeman's characters display heroism within their economically and geographically circumscri circumscribed existences strong will to the point of stubbornness they support traditional values of pride honesty frugality and industriousness although they're understated freeman's stories contain a psychological depth and literary literary richness that transcend the confines of their surface details. This one also wrote, although she wrote about men, her most fascinating characters are women, especially older ones, and in her best work, A Humble Romance and Other Stories, and A New England Nun and Other Stories, from which the following stories are taken, Freeman's heroines are depicted with extraordinary sensitivity and insight. The major theme running through all of her fiction is the struggle of every human being to preserve his or her dignity and self-respect when confronted with difficult decisions. So as you can see, Freeman's females were really progressive in this time period. Even the critics say that her, like, the thing is that, like, reading it now, we see, we can compare it to works today, but in the past, these females are really fascinating. They really challenged social roles. This wasn't normal in this time period, and I think that it's really amazing that she was able to do that in this time period. And these are just my work side of lists. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.